no matter how many fancy new productivity tools you use, I'm sure you and me, we all end up in the exact same spot again, doom scrolling through Instagram for hours upon hours, pondering for our existence and why we can never seem to get anything done. Well, I've been there, and to be honest with you, it sucks being there. I'm sure you knew that. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a few tips I use every day, and also a few extra tips which I don't use, but I've seen online which people vouch for, which work for them, and I'm going to be explaining to you how these tips work, why you should use them, how these tips will help you get more done in a given day. The first tip is one tip I use almost every day, and if you don't take anything else away from this video, this is the one thing you have to take away from this video, in my opinion, as this tip is just life-changing. This is called making a daily highlight. Now, what that means is every day you'll have one daily highlight. So what this basically means is you have one task you want to get done no matter what. So for example, uh, you don't only have one task today, but what happens is you might have uh, your daily highlight be script a video today. So you, you'd be like, you know what? You might have script a video, film this video, uh, edit this video, thumbnail for this video, four different videos and multiple different things. But the thing is, is your daily highlight is scripted video, which means, let's say you only get the scripting for the video done because it was a huge script or it took you longer than you thought, or, no matter what. You're happy with yourself is you got the one main task you wanted to get done that day. That's the whole idea. Basically, so I'm sure you've all been there where you're like, oh, I really wanted to get all these things done today. I only got one thing. When you're lying in bed, you're wondering why you even exist anymore. You're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why can't I get anything done? So yeah, this tip helps get over that but the thing with daily highlight is the daily highlight doesn't just have to be something productive you want to do the daily highlight can also be watch this netflix series or read this book or read this blog post the point of a daily highlight is just getting one task done it does not have to be anything to do with work productivity it can be anything you want and i think this is one of the greatest tips i've ever used and this is taken from a book called to make time by jake knapp and john I forget his last name, to be honest, I feel a bit bad. Uh, yeah, I'm halfway through reading this book, and this book is amazing. And if you want to make more time in your day, or anything, this book, I'd 100% recommend it, as this book is amazing. Normally, what I do with my daily highlight is I have a set point in my calendar, for example, from 9am to 1pm, and how long this task will take. So, I'm guessing you can guess my Linus Tech Tips level transition of what my next thing will be. Yeah, that's right, you guess. Not time joking, time blocking! As time in the name, you, you, you were close. So what time blocking is, is time blocking is basically where you set out in your calendar for everything you want to get done and more, more on that soon, more, more, yes, double more. Everything you want to get done in your calendar has a time slot basically and this how lots of people like Elon Musk plan their days and it's just a really interesting technique which I like using and it's personally helped me a lot. So the way this works is you might have in your calendar from 9am to 1pm as I said before for writing the video and that's your daily highlight. And then, for example, from 1.15 until 2 o'clock filming the video, and then you have so on and so forth. But, here's the thing with time blocking, uh, you don't just put work in your calendar, yeah. Um, if you're cool, one, use coloured, use colour-coded ca calendars, I actually can't English right now, because of, uh, that's what all the cool people do, and also a glance, it looks a lot nicer, you can also kind of figure out what's going on. Second of all, you also want to schedule personal things into the calendar such as at 6pm until 9pm, watch television. God, that's probably bad for you watching that much television, but you you scroll through TikTok for like five hours a day, so it's the equivalent. Hey, I knew I was going to go swear from being that close to a screen. Or did my parents lie to me? Here's a few tips on the tip of time blocking. Okay, that sounded a great sentence. Anyways, uh, one, give yourself buffer time between each task. I'd recommend at least five minutes minimum between each task. I typically try and leave 10 to 15 minutes between each task. So you have a little time, overboard time. Let's say you're writing a script takes 10 minutes longer than expected. You, you got a little overboard time or you need to put stuff away. Or you just want to like chill for a second, maybe go for a quick walk or go to a loo or anything. I just like to give myself buffer in between each task. And you don't need to use the buffer if you don't want to, but try and at least take a five minute break between each task I'd recommend. Second of all, the issue is, is you don't know how long a task is going to take you, do you? Unless you track your time. Yet again, my Linus Tech Tips level segue. That's right, the third tip is time tracking. Now, time tracking is mwah, the presto of the resistance. I don't actually know how that word is said. I think I said it correctly, but time tracking is amazing. And I love time tracking. And it's one of the other things you could take away from your list other than the daily highlight. You know what? Just take it all away from your list. Everything I'm giving you is amazing. At least 
so far. But I'm sure you can gather what time tracking is, is where you track your time. Look, I've been doing time tracking for two years now, and to say it changed my life is a bit of an understatement. Time tracking is amazing, and I can't imagine life without time tracking now. Look, the whole reason I like time tracking so much is I know where all my time is going, I know how long each project's going to take me, and also, it just allows me to feel a lot more focused. For example, if I know I have a writing timer going on for writing a video, then I might start watching a YouTube video. I know in the back of my mind, but the time is going to be lying. And my OCD cannot deal with that. So, I, I just, I either uh, promptly explode, or I actually do the task which the timer says I'm supposed to be doing. You know, or I end the task, sorry. Task. I end the timer, start a new timer, it's a whole process. But normally my OCD's like, can't comprehend, must get back to tasks I'm supposed to be doing. So yeah, robots. Now, I also used to track personal time, but I've stopped tracking personal time. So what I normally do is, I get up at 5 and I go to go into bed around 9. So what I normally do is any time track between 5 and 9, but it's not uh, like tracked basically, and it's more than like 10 minutes in between, I was most likely doing something like going for a walk or something. So I'll just, um, I'll just like, no, but that's personal time. Actually, walking, I use the exercise project though, so yeah. Now, for time tracking, I'd recommend using Toggle as a backend service. But as I've mentioned before in videos, the Toggle app sucks so badly. I would not wish at my worst enemy to use the Toggle app. This is where Timery comes into play. So Timery is a front-end for Toggle. It basically connects to the Toggle through um science also known as an api but more like science and it's basically just amazing timery as shortcut support automation save timers it's so much great stuff timery i'm planning on making a video in the future talking about how time tracking has like changed everything i will be having videos in the future to do of automations by the way as i really do like the idea of doing like videos talk explaining to you how i use shortcuts to automate stuff and I'll give you a quick freebie here though. When I start a work on my Apple Watch, automatically starts my exercise timer project thing in in Timery. So and then it connects to toggle and stuff. And yeah, it's great. I'd 100% recommend time tracking too, as time tracking is amazing. All right, now we're getting to one of these tips which I have not used myself, but I've heard from people on the internet that this tip is supposed to be amazing. This is accountability. Now, accountability is something I find quite interesting. The whole idea of it is. You might tell a friend, for the next two years, I'm going to publish a new blog post every week. And let's say, seven months in, you don't post that week, your friend will have some sort of punishment for you. So the punishment might be, you give him £50, or, I don't know, it could be anything. Or it might be your friend speaks to you and it's like, why don't you do this post? What's going on? Are you okay? And if, you, and if you're and if you finding you're just being lazy, your friend might be like, you know what? This is going to happen, or you're going to take me out to do this, or, you know what I mean? You just have a lot of, like, things, but... But accountability really is cool for me, well, not cool for me, but cool in my opinion, is there's lots of services online where you can set up, like, for example, if I don't do this every month and you'll have some sort of way of proving you've done it, then remove £50 from my account. Now, if it's just for, like, some sort of side project, like blogging, I wouldn't recommend removing £50 from your account if you forget to post every week. I'd recommend something a bit <laughs> lower. But... If it's like your job to blog or your job's YouTube or something and you need to make sure you get this shit done, then yeah, I'd 100% recommend looking into accountability for stuff like this where it removes money from your account as it's motivational enough to most people. And also that reminds me, uh, what's his name? Thomas Frank. I remember I saw something. He, he had a thing. Basically, if he didn't wake up every morning at like 6.30 or 5, I don't remember when it was. But he'd have a scheduled tweet that would go out telling everyone he's lazy and the first five people to respond to a tweet would get five dollars PayPal. That's such a little clever idea but using accountability yet again. Now this is a method which I don't like personally but I know a lot of people swear by this method and that's the Pomodoro timer. You set a timer for 20 minutes, you do the work, then you set a timer for five minutes, you have a break, yada yada yada, you move on with life, all this spell and you keep on rinsing and repeating until the process is done. Not process, project. Yeah, I mean... It works for some people, but the reason I don't like it is, for me, the minute I get out of a state of flow, you know what happens? Ah, better than better than I'm trying to do an iPhone alarm impression. I can't do one, but yeah, the minute I get into a state of flow, the alarm goes off, and I'm like, oh, gotta go, gotta go and do that, gotta go and do that. So I just don't like it. I can't deal with it. As the minute I get into a state of flow for me, I'm already having to move on to do something else. Now, the next one is one I'd 100% recommend yet again. And this is a to-do list, and I'm sure you know what that is. You basically just have a list of everything you need to get done. This may seem basic, and you have, can have it digitally, you can have it on paper, I don't care what app you have it in. No matter how you have it, 
You need to have a to-do list, man. What are you doing about a to-do list? It's just life-changing, frankly, to be honest with you. I don't know how I lived about a to-do list for so long. I mean, it's just so simple. And then what I do is a week in advance, let's move on to the next tip, a weekly review. What I do a week in advance is I basically plan out my whole week with time blocking. I look over my email, drafts, inbox, and so much stuff, and I plan my whole week. So I know, beginning of each week, on Mondays, I don't have to think, all right, what have I got to do today? Or on Tuesday, what have I got to do today? I can just look at my to-do list to make hand and be like, all right, got to do this day, got to do that today, got to do that today. It's so simple, and it's actually pretty life-changing. But a little tip with to-do lists. Please don't be like me when I started using to-do lists, and I'm sure you're probably doing this right now if you're using a to-do list. You don't give yourself 12 tasks due a day. Give yourself three big tasks due a day, minute. Like, three big tasks due a day, and then I'd say you can have lots of little small tasks. You might have a little task like water the plants or read a chapter of this book, but don't give yourself, like, 12 different big tasks each day. It's just going to get overwhelming. You're not going to do it. You're going to fall to a state of, like, pressure and sadness. you be like, why am I doing anything? You're going to have a toxic relationship with yourself, basically. So I recommend only giving yourself max three, like, big tasks to do on a single day. Also, if you're getting stuck on how to set up a to-do list properly or how to do a weekly review, any fancy stuff like that, I'd, I haven't read it myself, but I'm planning on reading it and I've heard it's pretty good. I'd recommend reading uh, GTD or Getting Things Done by David Allen. It's supposed to be a really good book helping you understand all of this stuff better. All right, but that's going to be it. Those are my six, five, I, I don't know, productivity tips I'd recommend to all of you. And look, if there's only one I'd take away from this video. It's a da it's the daily highlight. Just take that one away. It's the most important one, in my opinion. But if you're looking to take all of them away, great. They're all great tips, in my opinion. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.